The phone call comes out of the blue, breaking the long stretches of silence between me and my dad. It is early last year and he is calling from Melbourne, my hometown. I am at work in Sydney, eating a sandwich on a sunlit terrace above the Harris Street hubbub. He rarely calls. His voice sounds weak and plaintive and I struggle to hear him. Jazz, I'm getting old now, he says, in a slow Cambodian lilt. I wanted to ask you, would you take a wife? It's been 15 years since I came out to him as gay. Not once has he expressed an interest in my love life. Now, he is proposing an arranged marriage to a successful young Cambodian woman known to our family in Melbourne. I can ask for you, he proffers. My first exposure to Cambodian arranged marriages was as a child growing up in 1980s Melbourne. I remember being in someone's house, watching the bride and groom, both dressed in white. Having their photos taken. A cousin was standing next to me and observed that the newlyweds didn't know each other before that day. How can they be in love? He wondered out loud. I was thinking the same thing and asked my dad. They will grow to love each other. My father reasoned. This logic made even less sense now that it was being offered to me. Decades later. Down the phone line, my dad continues his proposal, explaining how he wants a big family. He is envious when proud friends show photos of their grandchildren. It doesn't mean your life is any less worthy, I see he doesn't listen. You have a wife, then children, then grandchildren, he explains. That is a life. I have just a son and that's it. That is a life. As if my life did not mean anything. My life is not complete, he says, with heavy emphasis on each word. I tell him that it would not be impossible to have children if I had a husband. But even if I were straight I probably wouldn't want them. By the end of the phone call he sounds defeated. Okay, I will have to stop thinking about it now and live as normal. I try to finish my sandwich but no longer feel hungry, my eyes are stinging. I escape to a stairwell and slump on a step, replaying the fraud conversations I've had with my dad over the years. Not the time we were driving to the airport where I explained how I wanted to marry a man if it ever became legal. Or when my dad saw a photo of my beautiful female friend and asked why I wasn't attracted to her dad in the night I told him I was gay where he quietly responded while gripping a chair, but we sent you to a Catholic school. These memories swarmed through my head, underscored by my dad's words my life is not complete. Slumped in the stairwell, I realized no matter what I achieve in my life, without a wife, I will never be enough for my dad. Why couldn't he see me for who I was? My dad came to Australia from Cambodia in the early 1960s as an international student and was spared the genocide of the Khmer Rouge. My Buddhist Cambodian family have struggled with my identity. Cambodian relatives are desperate to ask, when you get married. My answer of when it is legal is usually met with dumbfounded expressions. My mother's Eurasian Malaysian family have less of a problem with me, despite being Catholic. My mother died when I was 12, so for a long time it has just been my dad and me, his Australian born son, dealing with our differences. Culturally and generationally. It's a bit over 12 months since my dad's phone proposal and the same sex marriage survey has begun. I imagine my dad watching the television news, bombarded by story after story. I worry he will vote no. I worry he will refuse to attend my future wedding. I picture myself standing before a celebrant taking my vows and breaking down in front of everyone because he's not there. I write him an email. Have you been following the news about the same sex marriage postal survey? Have you given any thought to how you'll vote? I click send. I check my inbox every day but there's no reply. A week passes before he gets back. He is circumspect. It is a controversial issue. It drags on too long now. Wait and see the vote. My dad's reply was a non-answer, much like when government departments issue a statement. I was being fobbed off by my own dad. Weeks later, the Yes campaign has released a chirpy advertising campaign urging people to ring your relatives to talk about the survey. If only it were that easy. One ad shows support of Anglo-Saxon parents with their gay son, hand on shoulder. They don't look like me or my family. It makes me realize the Turnbull government's survey has forced many Australians, like me, to confront family members who don't accept them. Despite the Yes campaign's optimistic vision of a modern pluralist society. Many Australians still live under a heavy cloak of secrecy and even shamed out they are forced to keep their true self invisible, or have it made invisible for them. They sit quietly at the family table, afraid the mere mention of their sexuality might elicit harsh war.